thank you for those that have joined on time. Um, day three, I know that this is a marathon. Thank you so much for staying this long. My name is Amalia Murray, and I'm really excited to get together virtually and to talk about a really important topic. Um, thank you to the team at Plug in South LA for helping make today's workshop possible. And we're here today to be of service to you, startups. We want to help you accelerate and strengthen your relationships with customers and would love to make this interactive. So at any time, you can um, request to speak and ask a question, and we can bring you up here on video or just audio, or you can chat in the window. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, before I get going, I just want to remind you all to please pay, uh, play, base any of your purchasing decisions off of products currently available. And with that, um, again, my name is Amalia and I'm the director of SMB Marketing uh, for our Salesforce for Startups program. And I sit on our small and medium business unit at Salesforce. And of course, our guest of honor is Gwendolyn Houston, who also goes by G. She is the founder, portrait artist, and small business trailblazer leading the way at G Photography. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. I'm going to do a quick um, overview, understanding of some challenges that small businesses and startups are facing right now uh, in this unique time, tackle exactly what CRM is and how it drives value for sales and service operations, and also take a look at how G Photography leverages essentials and runs her business. And we're going to sit down with Gwendolyn and have a little fireside chat. So, and then we'll obviously end with Q&A, but please, again, do ask questions throughout. And to just get started, um, over, overcoming challenges is something that startups do best, right? Uh, wearing multiple hats, keeping your focus on the customer, maybe trying to fundraise uh, from VCs. And this past year has certainly tested the notion of challenge in more ways than any of us could imagine. Um, every year we release something called the Small and Medium Business Trends Report. In 2020, we surveyed over 2,300 leaders around the world, pulling data from before and during the pandemic, which was very unique. Uh, we had no idea what was in store for us last March, but findings were really telling. Can anyone guess, and feel free to type in the chat, what top challenges SMB leaders identified? All right, well, I will spoil the fun here. First, acquiring new customers. Second, planning for the long term. And third, retaining existing customers. So number one and three might not be terribly surprising on a normal year even, but number two can definitely be tied to how a lot of us were feeling with the state of ambiguity last year. The report told us that, as you might expect, businesses accelerated their use of technology specifically to prepare for the future. And I think we know firsthand the food and beverage or, beverage or restaurant industry has massively changed in the past year. Um, and also my DoorDash bills. Uh, but small businesses from across all industries actually had to adapt to changing customer expectations. There's a lot of evidence here showing that growing SMBs are using technology to pivot to the customer, driving interactions via email marketing, customer relationship management, and so on. And Salesforce helps businesses do just that. Given that customer interaction is driving tech adoption, helping SMBs go digital, it's no surprise that the use of CRM, which we'll talk about a whole lot more in just a moment, is on the rise. And we're actually seeing a 25% increase in CRM usage from 2019 to the end of 2020. So let's talk about exactly what a CRM is and why startups turn to Salesforce to drive more connected customer relationships and accelerate their shift to digital. Are there any overachievers here, serial entrepreneurs, all of the above? Can someone share in the chat what CRM stands for? All right, well, CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. So how we define here at Salesforce is CRM is a tool that helps you systematically find prospects, 
win their business and then keep them happy. So find, win, keep is a good um, mnemonic to help you remember what CRM is. And another way to define it is it's a system that helps you build meaningful relationships with your prospects and customers and helps you do that at scale. Whether it's just you and a co-founder or a 10 person startup, uh, CRM makes it possible for you to deliver consistent and personalized experience to your prospects and customers while keeping everybody on the team accountable. And you can ensure you'll never miss a new marketing interest, build long lasting customer relationships and increase productivity of your sales team as well, which ultimately reduces your operational costs. But sometimes the biggest challenge is just knowing where to start. So what should you be looking for in a CRM? So because you need to move quickly, um, you don't have time and resources for software implementation um, and your employees are wearing multiple hats. So you need a system that you can easily set up and configure. You want to get value out of the system as soon as possible. So you need one that's easy for everyone to use and ensure that they're actually using it. Uh, and then lastly, while you might be small now, you want a system that will be able to handle your needs as you grow. So you need a CRM that will scale with you as you have more employees, more customers, and more prospects. And so our team really took this to heart when we built Salesforce Essentials about three years ago now. Um, quick overview of Salesforce Essentials. Um, you'll see a little promo pinned to the chat um, that you can click on and learn a little bit about and take advantage of today. Um, it's the easy, fast, cost-efficient way to get up and running with Salesforce. So you can get started quickly without implementation strategies or an admin. Um, we have guided setup and in-app help to walk you through the process. And if you need extra help, we also have dedicated coaches to help you one-on-one. -on -one. So once you get started, Essentials helps you sell smarter and deliver faster support. Um, and you get both sales and service built into a single app that you can access on your phone or on any desktop. And so let's not forget about working remotely. Um, I don't know about your current setup, but I am coming up on day 430 maybe at the, at the Murray co-working space here, also known as my front room. Um, Essentials helps you connect to your team no matter where they are. So whether they're currently working from home, back at the office, um, or possibly a combination of both right now, um, Essentials helps keep all the information about your customers centralized in a single location. Um, so excitingly, we offer a 14-day free trial, and you can see how it best fits your business. Um, a little bit about CRM for sales. So Essentials can help you in three important ways. You can create a single view of the customer from past and upcoming meetings, um, email exchanges, whether you're on Gmail or Outlook. Um, Essentials gives you the power to always know what's going on with a given account and tra transaction in a few clicks. Second, you can automate a lot of time-consuming manual tasks. Essentials can automatically schedule appointments and meetings um, automate follow-up tasks and log activities so that your team can be more productive. And then third, finally, and most importantly, it allows you to develop and continuously improve a well-defined sales process so everyone on your team knows exactly how to succeed at every step of the deal. And then moving on to support, um, how do you ensure that your customers have a great experience with your company and brand once they become a customer? So Essentials gives you a single view of the customer, not only from the sales perspective, but also support. Your support team has everything at their fingertips to make every customer interaction personal and contextual. Um, you can automate responses to common customer questions. Let's say a password reset inquiry. Um, this way your customers can get the help they need a lot faster and your support team or support person, or maybe you will have more resources to focus on more complex issues uh, for support. And then finally, Essentials allows you to offer your customers self-service support um, with a branded support website or portal um, so they can find and look up answers to their issues on their own time. 
Um, in this end, this will make tremendous, uh, tr take a tremendous burden off of you or whoever's handling support to focus on more complex issues. And now that we heard a lot about CRM and how it can streamline processes and increase productivity, um, how about here, how a customer of our own has used essentials. Now, before I bring Gwendolyn on, who's here with us today, um, I wanted to share this short video of how Maggie Palmer, founder and CEO of Pep Talker, has relied on essentials to pivot and stay engaged with customers and prospects. So, in a second here, I'm gonna share this video. And this is my first time using Hopin, so hopefully this goes all right. So my name is Maggie Palmer and I'm the founder of Pep Talk Her. We're on a mission to close the gender pay gap. Well, uh, hopefully y'all could hear that. All right. Thank you, Talani. And I'm just seeing that you had a question. Um, so you had a question, the CTAs that actually grow your CRM. I feel what is sometimes often the bottleneck to from SMBs on top of POS systems. So um, I think your question here is how do you get people to you? Either, either one is your question to um, get your employees to um, input more data into your CRM and utilize it more? Or is the question more externally, how can you get more people's data into it? So, well, yeah, exactly. Most people don't have sales teams, so it's probably you selling and you need to get more data, right? So um, one thing is like putting a form on your website or putting forms into social media, like, would you like to learn more? Sign up here to create like a newsletter or something. Um, any person you meet anytime, you know, anytime you email them, ensure that your email is connected to your CRM so that you're tracking every interaction and then you can easily look it up in your CRM, um, ensure that you, you know, set up meeting reminders or set up appointments to track, um, how you're, how you're engaging with that prospect or customer ongoing, um, so thank you for asking that question and please keep the questions coming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share one more time. All right, so now for the main event, I'm really excited to introduce Gwendolyn Houston, AKA G. Uh, G is the founder, portrait artist, trailblazer and entrepreneur behind G Photography. G Photography specializes in creating modern lifestyle portrait arts of families and individuals. Let's hear why Gwendolyn turned to Salesforce Essentials to help her scale her growth and deepen relationships with her clients. So welcome, G. 
Thank you, Amalia. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here. It's been a great day so far with all the presentations. So I'm happy to share my part. Um, so as G Photography began growing, I am sure like a lot of other small businesses out there, uh, I outgrew the system I had. I was using Post-it notes, Evernote, Excel spreadsheet, a little bit of everything. So when I started looking for a CRM, I knew I wanted something that would be scalable and grow with me. So that was number one. Number two, I wanted better vision into my customer. Um, again, using a hodgepodge of systems, I didn't really have a true view of who I was working with and who my ideal client was. So I wanted some way to keep a nice holistic view. I want that to be available. And then lastly, I was missing opportunities. Um, you don't know what you don't know until like something points it out to you. So I was missing opportunities where I would have the lead and then time would go by and I wouldn't follow up and I just wasn't really organized. Like that was a huge thing for me. So let's see here. Christmas Eve 2018, Gwendolyn says, OK, I need to make a decision. Now, I've used Salesforce in my full time job, so I knew of it, but I thought this is a big company. I'm one person. Surely I can't afford such a thing. And in photography, there are CRMs made specifically for photographers. But again, I'm thinking big picture. I'm going to do something more than just photography eventually. So how do I scale that? So um, I went looking on salesforce.com and I was like, oh, Salesforce Essentials. OK, for small businesses. All right, let's check it out. 14 days. All right. So I get home. And it's Christmas Eve turning into Christmas and everything is uploading. I literally screamed. My husband, he was concerned. He's like, what's going on? I was like, it's all in the right place. It's all amazing. So everything fell into place. And I thought, holy shnikes, this is awesome. So it was uh, January 2019, I signed my contract. And immediately, immediately fell in love with my dashboard. Uh, every morning I wake up, I can see my sales. I can see my top priority deals. I can see um, my leads, opportunities. I get reminders of what may be going a little to the wayside. I can see my goals both quarterly and for the fiscal year. I thought, okay, Gwendolyn, you're growing up. All right, I see you. So I got that one. And then when it came to my customer, so we do a lot of mock-ups. And when I'm working with customers, I'm picking out their wardrobe. I have images of their home because we work in the home sometimes. So to keep all of those images, mock-ups, email, contract, birthdays, the kids' names, special events, it's all in one place. When I make a phone call to them through this Salesforce environment, it's all in one place. So I'm not hunting. I'm not trying to remember stuff. I have this really, truly holistic view. And it has made the hugest difference in terms of relationships. And then lastly, with my leads, um, because I like to be mobile and I work on my laptop, I have my phone as I'm out and someone says, oh, you do pictures. I might want to do this. I pop it out, pop, 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 put in my, uh, my lead into a campaign if need be, and then I can immediately keep tabs. Are they hot? Are they warm? Are they cold? What notes did we share at this party or someplace wherever I was? Because I'm always out someplace. Well, well, now that I'm fully vaccinated, I'm always out someplace. <laughs> so uh, it just it just changed changed how I operated, and in so many ways, I felt like I actually grew up. I felt like I was being like real legit because beforehand I was just playing like I was like running a business, but now I'm really running a business. So overall, the first year, there was a higher efficiency, higher productivity. I did triple my sales. My sales are tripled because if you can see what's going on and what's not happening, you can make the move the way that you should make the move. So um, we, we got everything we wanted in that first year. And I was like, OK, but this is first year, right? First year is always like amazing. And so I thought, well, in 2020, we're going to do it. And then 2020 said, ah, pump the brakes now, sister. Uh, there's a pandemic going on. So hold on. <laughs> and I was like, no big deal. No big deal. We still did a lot of great things in 2020, which we'll, we'll share. Um, but 2021 is off to an amazing start. So it's not a fluke. I am legit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear. Yeah, I can't wait to share more about that. You were you were telling me a little bit about it before we started this session. Um, but yeah, amazing to hear your story and 
And I think that, you know, you'll be able to answer a lot of questions that we've got here. I do see Gabriel, you have um, requested to speak. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring you on if you have a question. Gabriel, are you here with us? All right, this is my first time using Hopin. So I did allow Gabriel in here, but <laughs> it may not have worked. So um, in an effort to keep things moving, I will go ahead and just kick off the official fire, fireside chat here. Um, thanks for that intro, G. Um, moving kind of back, can you tell us a little bit about what events led you to becoming an entrepreneur and starting your own business? Okay, so um, in 2009, uh, I was underemployed. It was a conscious decision. I want to make sure I, I make that clear. Like you, we take gamble there, and um, it didn't work out in my favor. No big deal. But I became underemployed, and I thought I do not want to try to find another part-time job to make a full-time job because that never really works. Like it never equals. And I had to find something that I could do that um, would allow me to make some extra income, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I have a cousin in the L.A. area. He's a photographer. And he said, hey, you've got a pretty good eye. I was like, really? So I thought, well, maybe this is what I could do. Perhaps this is the way to go. Now, I want to make sure we set the scene. Um, we're talking like 2009s. The clubs are still hopping. There's a camera guy. So now there's a camera girl. OK, so it's it's it was an easy, an easy transition. Um, but then I also did like family events, like reunions and what have you. And so I said, I'm really digging this. This is another side of me to be creative and I enjoy what I do. So let's make this like truly um, my next career and just invest in it. So it all came from not liking the current situation I was in. Yeah. And then you mentioned that you were using Salesforce in your uh company at the time and then you know you started off with with your own company did you know immediately that you would kind of bring that with you no it, it had never never dawned um i would say that we started using salesforce in like 2010 2011 and um it changed the way that we did our business and you know when, when you're in a bigger corporation what have you you see a lot of programs and you immediately think dollar signs so i'm not gonna lie i thought salesforce was beyond what i could afford as a one person or even a hundred person business like a small business i didn't think i could um, afford it but i loved using it there and so then when i uh brought it into my world i thought okay i am now my own admin how do we do this uh but there's trailhead oh my god <laughs> I, I, I love Trailhead. I'm this close to, to getting like Ranger ranks. I'm so close. Um, easy to set up. Like I didn't have to have this other background. So even if I had not used it, it would have been easy to set up as well. And then um, there are those coaches too. And the community, if you have a question, those the, the Trailblazer communities, they, they are all so helpful. Everybody just wants to help you succeed, which you don't see very often. Hate to say that. Um, but it's like yeah. I found my tribe. I found my people. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Well, how do you think it's impacted how you run your business and how you interact with your customers, like the before and the after? So before, um, I'm going to use the phrase that I really did grow up and there was a lot of accountability. Uh, when I was starting out, and I started this in 2000, like I got my DBA like in 2012. So so we really, you know, it's almost, it's almost been 10 years, but... I was just going through the motions and I'm going to say playing, playing like I was running a business. But when you introduce Salesforce, you have to think about your selling process, which I had never thought about. I had never thought about how a customer contacts me, gets the session, gets the product, gets delivery, had never considered it. So I was just sort of making it up as I went. But this required some some self-reflection on me and my company and said, OK, what are you doing and what's your purpose and what's your goal? And like quarterly goals, fiscal year goals, like what is that? If you're going to do a campaign, plan for it in advance, which I had never done before. I just sort of, it's time for senior sessions. Okay, it's time for families. And now there's actually a marketing plan. What? <laughs> right? And I can plan for how much money I'm going to spend. So it was not just some random dollar someplace. And then I could see if I made that money back, if not more, because it's all in it's all in my dashboard. I have like automatic reporting. And so like my heart just smiles. Yeah. It made a huge difference. Huge. 
That's great. I see a question here from Remy. Um, and Remy asked, does the social integration feature allow you to automatically pull leads from social media or is that a manual process? Um, so there is direct social integration. So like if you have, like you could answer support questions through Twitter, um, through, through your other social channels directly with Salesforce. Um, Gwendolyn, I don't know if you use that, but um, it definitely is a feature that is offered. I do use it. Uh, I get a lot of leads through uh, Facebook, Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger. And so when it comes in, it creates like a, a profile for them. So if they are legit lead, and I still put them into my lead column. Like I put them in there to go through that process because mm -hmm. it just comes in as like a contact, somebody who like reached out to me. Um, so if they are qualified, then they continue. If they're not, then at least I know at some point they did reach out to me and it still collects that history because, you know, people do reach out. Maybe they're not ready and then they come back. A lot of times you have to um, build the trust for people, mm -hmm. which I understand. Like I'm, I'm, I'm service based. They don't know me from Adam or Eve. They're like, I don't know if I want to give that kind of money. So right. they will sort of watch you and interact with you to see who you are and what you stand for before they decide to invest in your service. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. Mm -hmm. um, with that, could you talk a little bit about the voice of your brand, how you developed it and how you differentiate it in a very saturated market of photographers? Ooh, okay. So the voice of my brand is Gwendolyn. I am all G all the time. So I know there, there's, you know, how, there's places where you hear like code words or keywords or trigger words or the word of the year. So being authentic, I am sure we've all heard it, but it really does make a difference. And it, it can't be something that is like not real. You really do have to be authentic. So my voice is what, how I live my life. I'm about inclusion and diversity. I'm about self-love and inner peace. I am about being authentic. And all of that revolves in, in like how I capture someone and how I interact with people. I am, I'm an open book. Like people want to ask me questions. I am here. Uh, I don't believe in the, you know, I have to win. So you have to lose. I don't believe in a zero sum game. I think everybody can win. I believe in an each one teach one community. So you know, when you are yourself, when you are truly yourself, customers will seek you out for that. There was a mother just recently who her whole entire reason for picking me out was I, she said, I am sure my son would love working with you. I am positive. And I'm thinking nothing about the art because, you know, because that looks good too. It was yeah. all about the experience. And in a world where we're all doing the same thing, you know, selling a car, loaf of bread, a bottle of water, we're all doing the same thing. Yeah. The one thing that makes you different is how you do it. And if you're putting you into it, if that's part of your purpose, then it's done. Like it can be super saturated, but it is, it is done. So um, of course I delivered, I am an experience just in case you hadn't, can't tell, I am an experience. Uh, so she was happy. The son was crazy happy as well, but it's those things that mm -hmm. I'm able to articulate through images and through newsletters or my social feed that people are like, I want to work with her. Yeah. 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 I want to do that. So being authentic is number one. Number one I thing. I love that. Um, along a similar thread, how should startups think about humanizing the sales experience? Okay. So when you create a business, if, if your sole purpose for creating the business is to make money, it's not going to go far. I'm just going to put it out there for you. It's not, it's not going to work. Um, your business needs a purpose. It is its own identity, right? And it needs a purpose. And so when you forget why you're in business, like what problem you're solving for what person, i.e. your customer, it's going to probably like, you know, fall flat. So my whole business, I know I sell a physical product that is an image, but my whole purpose is to provide joy to others, right? While they're enjoying this moment or creating joy for them where it didn't even exist. That is my whole purpose. Like all of that encompasses that. So when I talk to my customers, my clients, even if they're just reaching out through like social media or something, we are having a true blue conversation. It is as if we were, you know, best friends or something from way back when. But you have to understand who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And it, it still it goes back to if you're not authentic, then that's going to show because you're not genuinely sincerely interested in what you're offering to that person and what your business stands for. I want to make money. Yes, you know, we, we need money to pay for bills and have nice things. Okay, great. 
but it has to be more than that. What gets you out of the bed has to be more than that. And so when you're working with your customer, you have to remember who you're talking to and what your what your purpose is and why you're servicing them. I mean, that mother, it just it hit home for me. I was like, oh, because everybody's like, yeah, I like working with you. But she was the only one who said, I want to tell you why my son needs to work with you. He is yeah. shy, but I know he would just love working with you. I'm thinking, really? Really? Because that could be a bit much. <laughs> but uh, but he was, he was, he's an introvert. I actually am an introvert too, believe it or not. Um, but it worked out really well. It worked out amazingly well. But you have to remember why you're in business. If yeah. you completely forget the, the customer, and you forget how to service them and why you created what you created, then it doesn't work out well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Customer has to be at the forefront of everything you do. Um, what are your thoughts on building community in the world of entrepreneurship? So there's your customers, but then there's also just that broader community. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm an each one teach one. I'm an each one teach one. I believe that you need to have a well-rounded circle of reliable resources and people that you interact with. They should not all look like you. They should not all have the same um, life that you have. You have to have different facets to make sure that you truly understand the human experience. So there are people who are younger than me, people who are older than me, but we have to truly help each other get through this. I believe that everybody can win. Um, I love to eat. And so um, there's always enough pie to go around, right? It shouldn't be, hey, I'm not going to help you or I don't want to give you any advice or I don't want to do it. It's like, it, it's, that's just not, it's not sustainable. It's uh -huh. just not sustainable. So I am one for having a healthy community where we all help each other. Um, I have fellow photographers where we chat on a monthly basis. Sometimes we, we, chat, we chat weekly and we share information there. I have had two young people reach out to me to, for me to be their mentor. And I thought, oh, that's, that's I good. Guess, I suppose. But the deal is like you have to give back, right? Yeah. Is not so much as I'm going to take, take, take and never give back in some form or fashion. So whatever I can do to help these young people. And, you know, I'm a small business cheerleader. If there's somebody who wants to start a business and I know something that can help them, by all means. I'm like, look, let's let's sit down. Let's do a quick video chat and get it done. And this young lady, the two of them, actually, um, every other week we have a, a scheduled call. It's like an hour and a half. And we discuss, you know, social content. How do you manage that? How do you manage your brand? How do you manage this? How do you get this done? What are the legalities? Do you have your sales tax certificate? Do you have this? Do you have that? And we just need to help each other. This whole idea of I can't help you because if, if I do that, then I'm going to lose. It, I, I don't I don't understand that mindset. I don't come from from that kind of tribe. Yeah. I am one for each one, teach one. Yeah. There's a, there's competition, and then I've I've heard cooperation. So like co competition, there, there's a, there's like something in there where like you have to actually work with each other in order. You do, and and it was funny. Is I say funny, but not ha ha. So I, obviously, I know a lot of photographers, and I don't do all things. I don't do babies. I'm not the baby whisperer. I don't do babies. Um, if they are three and they can hold their own, then we can really have a conversation. If they're a little younger than that, it's like I don't know, but. I have friends who do babies. I have friends who do maternity. I have people who do like corporate events. So if I can send business your way, by all means, we all win. Everybody wins. Everybody so wins. Yeah. So With your specialization and focus, you can definitely exactly. kind of divvy that out and get referrals yes. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give the next generation? You talked about mentorship and helping them out. What would you give advice? How would you give advice for budding and especially diverse entrepreneurs? Uh, advice for diverse. Um, okay. So number one is network, but network with, how do I want to say it? network with a purpose? There are people who like to just network to get something out of it. Okay. It, it's a relationship. It is always a relationship. So it shouldn't be, what can I get from this person? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that kind of thing. Cause sometimes you can feel like, are you just trying to like use me to get someplace? I mean, if that's the case, then just say that I'll just introduce you to that. Like I do that all the time, but just tell me, but you know, networking to not only help yourself, but help others, right? Mm -hmm. I would definitely say that I go back to having a reliable circle of, of resources. I have mentors. I have a mentor for my art. I have a mentor for my business. I have a mentor for just like daily life stuff, right? Because we're, we're always learning. You should always be at a place of where you are learning. 
So a, re a reliable resource, having a mentor, and be hungry. Be hungry, be, be humble, be honest. If you don't know, say you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. say it. You know, a lot of folks like to um, create this well-coiffed life, especially on social media. And, you know, I'm, I'm slightly older, but, you know, I didn't have like Instagram and Facebook throwing in my face all of what you're not. I didn't have that. So like, if you look at my feed, there are dirty dishes and stuff hanging out everywhere. I mean, that's because that's, that's real life. Real life is, it's just me and the hubs and nobody's really visiting. So who cares if the house is clean? I mean, that's just, you know, hey, it doesn't bother me. So that's real life. But if you don't know something, say you don't know it, but live your life. Uh, I've had people who were like, well, how much, how much have you sold here? And what's this and what's that? My idea of success is my idea because it's me. It's about me. I'm not here for everybody else. You know, if you want to get two cars and a two car garage and a big house, then kudos to you. I'm just happy that, you know, I was able to actually drive today and not get arrested. I mean, you know, we have to have these small wins. So, you know, you have to figure out what your idea of success is and live your idea. It's so easy to get swayed and to get caught up and think you have to spend all this money. That's just that's not the case. But if you know who you are and you stay true to who you are, then you won't get lost in that shuffle. Yeah. Uh, people are loving it. Tulani is loving it. Um, hashtag, I woke up today. <laughs> All wins, right? Um, talk, I want to talk a little bit about the pandemic. Um, it's taken a toll on your industry, a lot of industries, professional services. Mm -hmm. um, I can only imagine how it's influenced you and your business being a photographer. Can you share a little bit how this shift impacted your business throughout last year and what it's like now? Uh, it was, it has actually strengthened the brand. Um, and I, I know for a good chunk of the pandemic, and I know we're still in it, but we're at the height of it. Uh, I turned the TV off because there was always a commercial somewhere that no offense, we're trying to sell you something. You have to know when to sell something, when not to sell something. Not, yeah. not every moment should be about how can I sell something to you? Um, so what we did during the pandemic was we just offered up our services. We offered up listening. Uh, I'm a great listener, believe it or not. Um, but I'm a great listener. And so for, for those who were in need, I was like, if you need an ear, I am here to, to just listen. I'm not going to judge. I'm just here to listen. And there were a few people who actually took me up on that and who became clients. They were like, but I trust her. So, of course, she would. She should capture my family. Of course, she should. Yeah, that, that goes back to you giving back again. You weren't yeah. asking for something. You were just giving back. And then it came just back to back. Just want to give back. We did a um, we did a prom king and queen contest. So for all the young people who did not get a chance to attend prom, that was awful. But a lot of them had bought dresses or a suit, and they were never going to wear it. So I just did a contest where six kids got like a grand prize, but every single child who entered received a photo session. So we paid for the makeup artist and for hair. We rented some kids a suit. Uh, we rented some dresses, but we drove all over Texas giving away these sessions just because we needed to create some joy. There was a lot of grief, grief of what could have been, what should have been, what was. It was a lot of grief. And sometimes you have to create some joy for yourself and others because I, I couldn't do anything. I was like, I just want to create. I just want to do something fun. And so we had a lot of great teens who were like, I'm all in. And I said, well, then let's do it. We just traveled uh, through Texas taking these pictures. And no offense, but my prom photos were not that great. So they really didn't miss anything on that <laughs> side. Um, the party, yes. The photography, probably not. So, so they, but, but that, now they have this great image and these great memories. And I was talking to one of the parents just this weekend, and she still talks about what we did for her daughter, right? Because it's about the experience. The, the product is, is all the same, but yeah. the experience is long lasting. That's amazing. Um, so, again, you figured out ways while business was slow to give back, mm -hmm. to, you know, keep engaging with your community. And then it came back this year. So, you know, in LA right now, things are starting to open up. California is opening up. Um, what do you think is in the future for entrepreneurs right now? Oh, this is the time to be an entrepreneur. This is, if I had, if I had like a, a stunt double, I'd probably do a second business. Um, what's, what's, I think say funny, what's 
what's telling, what's telling is in times of chaos, we tend to be more innovative because something is forcing us to change. And you can either change for the better or you can change for the worse. So for all those people who saw, okay, there are people who, who can't leave their home, who don't want to go get anything delivered, I will deliver it for you. I will create the service for you. There are so many opportunities right now. Now is the time to be a small business owner. I was telling someone just yesterday who had put their dreams aside. I was like, you know what? It's never too late. It is never too late. Yeah. He's like, you think so? I said, of course, of course. There are ways to do it. There are so many outlets. You know, you have so many ways, services, you've got social media. The world truly is your oyster at this point. It just depends on how much work you want to put into it. So he said, you know, thank you for that. I think I want to go back and look at it. Because as far as he's concerned, his dreams were over. I was like, no, by no means, by no means. It's never over. It's just, it's, it's just beginning. This is the best time to do it. So um, I have my full-time job, yes. But I, um, I do believe there is a workers' revolution going on. If I can sense it, just just a little bit. Yeah, uh, we have options. We, we we all have options. So you know, yes, I keep the full time gig because it's helping me do some other things that I want to do with with my next career. Um, but this 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 is like the best time. This is the best time to create a small business. I'm highly excited. Highly. That's yeah, I'm excited too. I can definitely feel a change in the air. Um, the amazing people that have been at this conference um, have been truly inspiring. And, oh, and I can feel yeah. the excitement even in the people in the room here. Um, I definitely want to leave more time for questions. So does anyone have any other questions in the chat? Or want to even come up and, you know, speak with the camera on or, or with your voice? Well, um, it's still there and available to you. Gee, are there any other um, tidbits of advice or anything you'd like to share with this audience? You know, um, it's a bunch of entrepreneurs, startups. Um, we even have some VCs here. Um, and they're all rallying around um, the community in South LA. And so any parting words of advice? Uh, you know, for me, uh, because of how I live my life, Putting yourself first is necessary. Uh, I was never part of the burn both ends thing. That that was me. My mother is a retired minister. Okay, so she is always one who said, "Hey, make time for you because when you're dead and gone, this world will keep on turning." So that was always my mindset. So I was never one to do the "Oh my God, I have to just be running and gunning." That was never me. But making time for yourself is it's necessary. Right. And even the strongest soldier gets weary. So you have to make sure that you have what you need to be refueled on a daily basis, monthly, weekly, yearly. But do what you have to do. So I journal. I journal for myself. But even my small business has a journal. Right. I want to track this journey and put the ideas down. There's a lot of power in the written word because it, it talks about where you are at that moment, mm -hmm. when you were thinking, what you were feeling, and you capture it. And then when you go back a week from now, two years from now, you're like, I remember when. This was just like, this idea was a dream and look at it now, right? Like it's happening now. And so you can jot down what you want to do and then when it happens, you can celebrate those successes. But this is it's just for you, though. It's just for you. So um, we, we do a lot of self-love. I do a self-soak on Sunday. I have something sparkling, either coconut water or what have you. Uh, but that's I get like about two hours, typically, uh, in the hottest water I can stand. And I'm also doing like some some trail mixes in there, too. Uh, so I kind of do I kind of do it all. But I would say put self first because it's going to be necessary to win. I love that. I love that. Um, let's see. We do have a couple questions here. So Daniel asked if you're able to segment different types of customers within Salesforce. Um, so I know G had talked about how she, um, she has her customers there. you have your, um, your vendors that you work with. Um, like what are the different segments that you have G? So for me, so, um, I read, and I don't know if everybody knows, Tiffany Bova, I read her book, Growth IQ, and there was a section in there about customers. 
And um, long story short, you want to keep the customers you have, right? A lot of companies plan for how they're going to gain new ones when they lose them, but it's like, keep the ones you have. It is cheaper. It's much cheaper. So I started a VIP program last year. And so in my group, I have VIP customers. I have customers who I can label as like, maybe this is the family. So I know they have like little ones who are still growing. And then I do different ones for those. Like if they have the senior who's almost out, I do have other small businesses who have contacted me for images. And so they have a certain label. So you can label your customers as you see fit and, and track them the same way that you can have a, a list for you to see like the last time you contacted somebody, you have that, that option in there as well. But you get to choose how you want to create, like you, you build it based on how you, manage your business. Um, I thought I had everything I wanted. And I said, you know what? I think I want this feature in there now because I give them like small gifts throughout the year to say, thank you. Thank you for supporting me and believing in my dream. So I have a way to track when I'm giving them those gifts. Like you can build this environment to match how you run your business as it changes. And that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. And I'm not really like a cold person. Like I'm tech savvy. I'm not simple. But um, but I'm building objects and things. I you know I'm like okay okay Jane, you got that girl you got it. <laughs> it's all those trail mixes. <laughs> I know right. <laughs> well, Daniel, hope that answers your question. Um, let's see. We also have a question here. Um, besides, what is a self soak? I think you know. <laughs> oh, the Sunday. Okay, so like okay, so you just have to find. Find something that is for you that allows you to just sort of like relax. I used to run, um, you know, I was a marathon runner and the pandemic happened and I don't know. I mean, I just, I decided to close up inside, uh, but I just take two hours and I get the little bubbles, I give them a little music and I just like relax. It's a great way to like reset for the week, you know? So I do it on Sunday and so I just sort of reset this is after I've worked out, of course. And then I get out, I'm like, okay, let's get started. So I typically do like all my social media stuff that day, like all my content. And I like, you know, plan it out so it can post automatically throughout the week. But that's my day to sort of get myself back to one, as we say. You need time. So it could, like if you meditate, that could be it. If you are a person who likes to bike, that could be it. If you have time for hiking, walking your dog, whatever makes you happy. But just this is time just for you and it's uninterrupted. Like I don't get interrupted. So the phone is on, like, do not disturb. I don't, I, I just, I'm not, I don't get bothered. It's like, don't bother me right now. This is my time. I love that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna implement that this weekend. Um, <laughs> question from Sean here. What are your thoughts on quantity versus quality when trying to stay active in promoting your services? Oh, you know, my, my mentor, she always told me, she said, it is not the quantity of work, but the quality of work. So if you don't do like, I don't post 5,000 times a day. It's not what I just, even if I planned it, I just, eh. I want to make sure that when I am working with someone either virtually through like social connects or face to face that I am making the best quality interaction I can make. I mean, you only get to make one first impression anyway. So, so put all that you can into that one versus you have to post 18 times. You have to do 18 reels and 25 stories. It's like, you know, yeah. to each his own, to each his own. But I don't, I don't do that. And I've done just fine, yeah. just fine. But if you are your authentic self, right. And you create quality content, you're going to see the results because it happens like that late show me on Google. I was like, Oh, okay. All right. I mean, Okay. You know, but her whole thing was I, you know, I have posted some videos, right? But um, as far as she can see, she was like, this is going to be great for my son. She yeah. never talked about the art, never, not once, never mentioned anything about images. Her whole thing was giving her senior, her only son, her only son, the very best experience. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And then granny was there. So it was grandma and mother and son. <laughs> and we had a great time. You had a great time. I love that. Um, any other recommended books to read or resources for folks? Oh man. Okay. So one of my favorites, if you are, if you really, and how do I say this? If you don't know who you are, let's just say it like that. And some of us really don't know who we are until we're in times like this, like a pandemic, like your real self shows up, like it really shows up. Right. Um, they always say like, you know, things are great when things are great, 
but in times of a storm, like what is your character, right? Mm -hmm. So one of my favorites is uh, Black Sheep by uh, Brent Mazwar. It's, it's, it's about your values and who you are. Love, love, love it. Um, Tiffany Bova, again, Cro uh, Growth IQ. Absolutely love that. There is one by uh, Anne McGee Cooper. Now she's an educator, but she talks about being the change. And that book is really focused on servant leadership, right? So, you know, for what I do as a, as a photographer, portrait artist, I am listening to people. Like I am coming into their homes. I am getting the most intimate details sometimes. And, you know, I think about how am I going to serve my customer? So I pick those books out. I mean, there are some others. I know Seth uh, Godin does one like on marketing and there's one by Simon Sinek about like your why and what have you. I'm always reading something. I'm always reading something. So um, if you email me, I'll send you a list. I got a great list. <laughs> there's, a, I, there's tons of books on that list. Uh, but those are like the ones that come to mind. What is your email address? And I will put it in the chat. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, you could um, email info at gphotographybyg.com. That's that one works right there. Info at g photography by right. g.com. Um, but yeah, I'm always reading something either on service or self-development, right? Because the whole idea is to be better, right? Like to be a better wife, sister, aunt, um, friend, you know, it's all about relationships. The human experience requires other humans. Yes. You can either be a really good human or you could be a not so good human. I prefer to be a really good human and figure out what can I do to help somebody else get through whatever they're getting through, right? And it doesn't have to be like through my art, um, I mean, we were offering, and well, I should say where we still are, we are offering for those who have lost their job, you know, free headshots, right? And I also write great resumes. I can say that too. So, <laughs> you know, we, we try to find ways to help people. It's just easier that way in life. Um, I always feel like whatever you put out in the world, you get back. So yes. if I don't get it back today, it's no big deal. I'll probably get it back, you know, 10, 20 years from now. And that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I love that. I love that. Well, we have about five minutes left. Any last questions? I love the engagement here. And I love your feedback, G. You always give me energy. <laughs> I am, you know, people are like, you're an introvert. I am an introvert. I know it sounds bizarre, but I am. I really am. <laughs> uh, people are like, that's just, those are lies. Those, those are not lies. Uh, I have found a way to make it work for me. I have found a way to make it work for me. Um, but yeah, I am, I am an introvert, believe it or not. Who would have ever thought? They're like, seriously? And one of these days when I get my like TV show, like Oprah, yeah, then we'll, yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's the secret is your self-soak. That's your me time. You have that. And then you can just kind of release the energy when you're with people. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Um, before we go, thank you again, G. Before we go, I just want to give you a quick reminder about um, the offer that we have for everybody here today. Um, you can go ahead and continue your journey to CRM. We have a free 14-day trial and also 50% off essentials. So it's actually really affordable yes. for a year, $12.50 per month. So we are not talking about thousands of dollars here. You can do all the things that G does here. Um, and help improve your sales process and engage with your customers um, for very little. So it's also pinned in uh, the chat window. Um, and then with that, I just want to say again, thank you so much, G. And thank you, everybody, for sticking around with us for this hour. Um, I will let you, G, give the parting words. Thank you again. Uh, my parting words is I wish all of you success, like real talk. I really do believe that if we work together as a community, um, everybody can win and, uh, and thrive. There is enough, enough business out there for all of us. There's so much pie available. So like each one, teach one to reach many is how I see it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. I need to get my book list together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah. Well, we have, I think we still have some people trickling out, but yes. Oh. Um, if anyone wants to join, please do. Um, yeah, we're here. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the book resources would be great. Um, I put all this stuff in the chat, what I could catch, um, and included your email address. So maybe you'll be getting some, some reach outs, but um, yeah, that was so great. And I love your energy as always. Yeah, it's a lot to it's a lot to take in. So we were like, are you always that way? Every morning I get up bright and early. My husband's like, it's just it's too early. It's like I, mean, <laughs> I get, you, I get that. Early. Well, you know, there's there's like an introvert, but then you can turn it on, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Part of my job I had to um I had to travel. And so when you're traveling and you're working with charities to raise money, you gotta talk to people. Right. Oh, yeah. So I found three things that I could talk about to like shake hands and, you know, hug a few babies and you, know, <laughs> you, you just you work with it. Uh, but no, I am people like you're an introvert. I said, hands down, man, like hands down. Like I, I would have never figured. I was like, no, really. It's, I, I am by I'm by nature a loner. This is how I like. But, it. Yeah. But you know what? The thing is, like you can gain energy from people. Yes. It's not necessarily that you're like. Yes. Talk it with, right? Mm -hmm. That you can hear yourself talk, but it's that you get energy from people, and that's the yes. part. Yeah, yeah, so it, <laughs> it works out. It works out. But this was great. Um, I, you know, if anybody reaches out, I will definitely have my book list ready. Maybe let's go ahead and create a book list, and that way, yeah, I, can I bet you, yeah, you have that on your website or something. So yeah, will, yeah, so it'll be will, easy. Uh, it'll be so easy. But there's always something that I'm reading. But I love Tiffany's book. I was like, oh, I need to get this. This is amazing. She's <laughs> great. She's great. Have you met her yet in person? Um, I saw her at Dreamforce in 2019. Yes, mm -hmm. in 2019, I saw her in Dreamforce. And she described the book. And I was like, oh, I should buy that. And then there was the um, there was the lunch note, the uh, breakfast for the small business group. I think it's like the, at the executive something group. Yeah, and yeah, she was speaking yeah. then. And that's the first time I saw her. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Changed my mind. I was like, yeah. Oh. She, now, she is an extrovert. <laughs> yes, yes. She, I would she's agree. Got energy, but she, oh, oh, man, she is nonstop. So she's yes. a yeah. true extrovert. Yeah. I, 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 I follow her on Twitter. I follow her on LinkedIn. And everything she, she puts out is always so wise. I'm just like, why didn't I think of that? But it's... <laughs> You know, she, I mean, she is good at what she does. Clearly, uh, I am soaking all of it up. I'm like, send it on, sister. I'm, I'm here. Uh, so definitely, I, I was like, okay, this is, because you know, like you see books, you're like, do I want to get that book? But I the know. way that she described it, it's so easy to read and understand. I was like, that's the business book I need, because I, I love that one. Love it. Okay, looks like Stella said we're going to be kicked off at two. So. Oh, okay. Thank well, then. Thank you so much. And thanks for everyone else that stayed tuned. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, G. Thank you.